this is True Crime Review. The date is, uh, well, it's, it's about midnight as of recording this. It's August uh, 31st, 2016. We're going to go over, the first one is the, um, the drugging, rape, and murder of Victoria Martens um, while her mother was present and making no attempt to intervene. Victoria is a 10-year-old girl, okay? Um, she was uh, injected with, with methamphetamines by um, her mother's uh, boyfriend, I think, and, um, and her boyfriend's cousin, another woman, was also present. Um, she was injected with meth, and, and then she was raped, and then she was stabbed, and then she was strangled, and then she was dismembered. I think um, uh, her arms were cut off, and, and maybe some more uh, dismemberment had occurred, and then she was um, put in the bathtub, wrapped in a blanket or something, and, and, and set on fire. Apparently, the rapist, who was the mother's um, uh, boyfriend, uh, did the injecting of the meth and the sexual assault. Um, he choked the girl, and then his cousin, the other woman present, uh, stabbed the girl. Uh, and, then, um, and then the man began to dismember her. Michelle Martens is the name of the mother. She is a piece of garbage, human garbage. Um, our next story is just as awful, involves just as much human fecal matter. Um, this is an update on the case of Brittany Drexel, who disappeared around 2009, I think. Um, a gentleman, a gentleman, I should say. Yeah, right. Um, a guy who is incarcerated on unrelated federal charges uh, gave the FBI new information, um, uh, hoping, I think, that he would get some kind of a deal on his charges. So I'm just going to read a little bit from the Post and Courier, which uh, is a newspaper, um, which is... Uh, Hold on a second here. This is the first episode, so I, I get to be a little uh, slack in my, my preparation here. Um, the Post and Courier, I guess, is um, uh, in the South Carolina uh, newspaper. Um, a teenage girl who disappeared from Myrtle Beach seven years ago was abducted, gang-raped, shot to death, and thrown into an alligator-infested swamp in the dense forests near McClellanville, according to the FBI. FBI agent Garrick Munoz this week gave the first detailed account of what investigators think happened to 17-year-old Brittany Drexel after she disappeared in 2009. His account, contained in a federal court transcript obtained by the Post and Courier, is based on a statement from a prison inmate who claims he was present when she was killed. But a McClellanville woman whose husband and son have been implicated by the inmates say the story is just a bunch of craziness adopted by federal authorities desperate to solve a vexing case. Um, the FBI has made a lot of mistakes, but, uh, you know, being uh, sort of preoccupied with true crime and, and, and looking into cases a lot like this one, where people vanish without a trace, um, I've rarely seen the FBI... Uh, that risk something like making stuff up, uh, you know, just to solve a, a cold case. Uh, so I'm just not buying that. Uh, allegedly, um, the inmate told the FBI agent, uh, quote, he went into a stash house in the McClellanville area in the days after Drexel was abducted. As he entered the house with a couple of other men, he saw Timothy Deshaun Taylor, then 16, sexually abusing Brittany De Drexel. Uh, apparently, the uh, individual spotted others in the room uh, with the girl 
and uh, Deshaun Taylor, who was sexually assaulting her, and kept walking through the house to the backyard to give some money to Taylor's father, Sean Taylor. Uh, as the two talked, Drexel ran out of the house. She was pistol whipped and taken back inside, so this girl almost escaped. Um, heartbreaking. It's just heartbreaking. Two shots rang out, and the inmate assumed Sean Taylor shot the girl. Um, the girl's body was wrapped up and taken away. Uh, several witnesses apparently told the FBI that her bottle, her body was placed in a pit or an alligator pit to be disposed of by being obviously uh, eaten by alligators. So, you know, just awful, just more human garbage, um, just, you know, just worthless, evil scum. Um, you know, there's just not much, not much else to say about this one. And finally, the Florida State University, 19-year-old um, Austin Haruf, who is accused of beating and stabbing a couple to death um, outside the garage they were just hanging out in, uh, just, you know, minding their own business. Um, he... Like I said, he beat them and, mur and stabbed them, and they did both die, but he was found when police arrived um, eating the face of one of, the, one of his victims, I believe the male, but I'm not certain about that. He also consumed unspecified chemicals, which um, police records indicate were corrosive. Uh, he was in a coma, when they took him to the hospital after the incident, um, and is now, his father says, suffering organ failure. He is apparently dealing with organ failure. Uh, even though he came out of the coma he was in, has not apparently been able to communicate with police yet, so uh, we don't really know that much uh, about this, uh, this individual's uh, crime. Uh, so we don't know what the hell happened there. Um, and we're going to end the night uh, just uh, on one more story here. The BBC reports that the Chinese Jack the Ripper has been caught. Uh, the BBC uh, writes, An alleged serial killer who was accused of raping and murdering 11 female victims in northern China over more than a decade has been captured by police. Gao Cheng Yong called China's Jack the Ripper was detained at a grocery store he runs with his wife. He admitted to the killings, which took place between 1988 and 2002. Gao is 52 years old, married, and the father of two. Police say he targeted young women dressed in red and followed them home, where he would rape them and kill them, often cutting their throat and mutilating their bodies. His youngest alleged victim was eight years old. eight years old. So, they were just ending the day with human garbage. The first alleged killing uh, attributed to Mr. Gao occurred in May 1988, the year Mr. Gao's son was born. The 23-year-old female victim was found with 26 stab wounds to her body. Um, he apparently also cut off parts of his victim's reproductive organs. Um, uh, I want to thank you. We're going to end it there. This has been uh, episode one of the True Crime Review podcast. As I said earlier, you can find us pretty much anywhere on social media at True Crime Review. Uh, Twitter, we did not get that. It's too long, so it's True Crime Rev uh, on Twitter. Um, get in touch. Like I said, facebook.com slash True Crime Review. Um, there is a website, truecrimereview.net. Right now, it just collects the links um, from which we draw our stories. And if you're on Reddit, um, go to r slash truecrimereview and subscribe there. And thank you for listening to the first episode of True Crime Review. <laughs>